What's the word, y'all? Welcome back. We are here. Day one of free agency is kind of calm. Actually, right before I hear, uh, record, Norman Powell got five years, 90 million. We're going to talk about things like that. Ignore all of this, man. I I'm in between hair appointments. If you want Kenny content, you got to take me as I am. And right now, I'm looking a bit dusty. It don't matter. I want to talk about day one of free agency. Even though it's still going on, I got to get to talking about it. And everything I say in this video, it's my own personal opinion. Most of it probably going to be wrong when we look back on it in two years. It don't matter, right? You just want initial reactions, don't you? Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. First thing, before we even talk about individual signing, the thing that is on my mind the most more than anything is that I need people out there, y'all who are watching this video, to understand what's going on in the league right now. Now, I am very far from a cap expert. The Bulls just did a deal with Daniel Tice ended up in Houston, and that means more trade exception. I don't understand it. But one thing I do understand is that in the year 2021, some of the contracts you see people sign are going to look ridiculous, outrageous because of the name. I mean, we talk about $80 million, but when you really think about it, in 2021 that's just the price of players if you're going to be an above average starter in the year 2021 you're going to be making between 15 to 20 million and sometimes even more the reason I say that, the New York Knicks signed Evan Fournier four years, 78, I think it was exactly. And people immediately on Twitter is like, yo, what are the Knicks doing? What are the I understand it. Sure, it might be slightly above what you think Evan Fournier is worth, but I'm telling you, it's not that bad especially we consider the last year is non-guaranteed then there's an option on top of it that's just the way it goes norman powell just got five years 90 million duncan robinson got 90 million this is what the market is alice caruso will not be started for the bulls and what do you get 37 38 million so don't necessarily look at the amount of M's a player is making. You got to compare it to everything that's going on around the league. That's all I'm really saying. That's all I'm really saying. Um, I'm not going to come out here and tell you my favorite sign and my least favorite sign. Let's talk about the Bulls because I know that's what the majority of y'all are here for. I went out to go get an old classic, the Fire Guard Pack shirt. I ain't wore this in years since he got, once he got fired, once they got fired and left the front office, I basically retired this shirt. But today... I'm bringing it back out because it's just a reminder of what us Bulls fans had to go through for, what, a decade? Now, I'm not going to come out here and tell you that us signing Lonzo Ball, us signing uh, Alice Caruso is turning the Bulls into a championship team to look out, league. No, but it's a step in the right direction. For the last half a decade, brother, I have been suffering as a Bulls fan. And with the signings of Lonzo Ball and Alice Caruso and more deals to be done, I'm saying I am excited for Bulls basketball more than I have before. And I said that the last two seasons. I understand that. I completely understand I've said that for two years straight. But this is actual moves that I believe can help us out to make a playoff push. It's been a long time since I can say I've enjoyed watching the Bulls, the Bulls play. I do believe the addition of Lonzo Ball and the addition of Alex Caruso help. One of the biggest things the Bulls struggle with this season is their perimeter defense, bar none. Our superstar, our star player, I'm not going to say superstar, our star player in Zach Levine is not known for his defense. He just isn't. We're starting players alongside of them, not known for his def their defense. Lonzo Ball is known for his defense. Alex Caruso got some all defensive second team votes. These are players that can come in and help us on the defensive side of the ball. How do they overall fit? I think they fit pretty well. I'm not expecting Lonzo Ball to be the savior of Chicago. I'm not going to say that. But I do believe his defensive impact, him being a, a, a great three-point shooter, at least last year. Watch him come to Chicago and be a below-average three-point shooter again. The last couple, one thing you can say about Lonzo Ball throughout his career is each single season, he has went into the offseason and went to work. Remember this man was shooting like this? That doesn't happen anymore. Yes, it's a seal a little bit to his side, but it's, it's as fluid as ever. I need him to continue to shoot his three-pointers. I need him to let us run with him and Zach Levine on the break, Patrick Williams on the break, and uh, Alex Caruso on the break. We should be a team that's getting up and down and running the fast break. I need him to defend, and I need him to hit his shots. That's it. That's that's all I'm really expecting. So, yes, I will be there open tonight, unless I'm away doing something work-related. As long as I'm in the city, I will be there for, for game number one in Chicago. Um, and we'll see what the rest of the offseason looks like for us because right now our roster is can, very far from complete. We don't know what Larry Marketing's deal is. We don't really know about this trade except for Daniel Tice, or at least I don't know what it's going to mean. This is just day one. A lot of the rosters that you see out there are not complete. That's all you need to realize. All right? Let's talk about more things. The Lakers getting the band back together. When I say the band back together, I mean it's former Lakers players coming back. We got Dwight Howard, third time in L.A. Um, um, Wayne Ellington. Who else? Trevor Reza. If you watch my main channel, I told you this was going to happen where, like, a lot of older players are going to sign to the Lakers to go on that ring chase. It's okay. And I said in my video, it's going to be the oldest team in the league. And guess what? Right now, that's what it's shaping up to be, baby. 
the oldest team in the in the league right now. They need some youth in there. That's one thing I can say. But ooh, ooh, Blake Griffin resigned. Okay, no big deal, no big deal. But what I'm saying with the Lakers, these are the players that you need alongside the team that you built. Wayne Ellison has always been a great three point shooter. I know Trevor Reese is not as fast or as great defensively as he was three at least three years ago or ten years ago. But he's going to help on the perimeter when it comes to the defense and hopefully he knocks down the shots. This is just, I think this is just the first step of Rob Palenka. He's been working, man. I do believe that this is not the last you're going to hear of the LA Lakers when it comes to this offseason. So, so far, I would grade them pretty solidly um, when it comes to their free agency because they know what their struggles are and they're trying to capitalize on that. Because a couple years ago, I don't know if y'all remember, like, the 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 offseason where like Rondo they they made had an offseason where they were not signing any shooters whatsoever it worked out at the end of the day they got a ring but I remember that offseason everybody was like what are the Lakers doing that's that's seven people that can't shoot the three-pointer it didn't really matter too much but at least this offseason they're like hey we need shooters we're gonna go get shooters and there are gonna be more people that are willing to sign with the Lakers um to potentially get that ring Chris Paul sag extension four years 120 million Immediately, Twitter blew up. Like, bro, that's a lot. That's a lot of money for a guy that's already what 36, 35, and I completely, completely understand. And I'm not saying you're wrong in that. But this is something I talked about on my podcast. But we were talking about when it comes to baseball, because y'all know in baseball they be signing these huge, huge contracts. I'm gonna give them a 700 million dollars for 10 years, and then in the last three years of that 10 years, a player that you sign is kind of bonds. But you're okay with that because you got seven great years of that player. I think that's what the Phoenix Suns are thinking. Chris Paul has not showed anything that said he is slowing down when it comes to his age. You can say what you want about a final appearance. I don't really care about that. But when it comes to overall impact on the organization, impact on the team, and him helping them win, getting to the finals... Those are valuable, valuable things. Will Chris Paul still be at this level in four years? Probably not. Probably not. But will he be like this next year? Probably. Will he be like this the year before that to some extent? Or the year after that to some extent? So I'm willing to pay Chris Paul four years if that means two of those four years can keep us into contention. And I think that's what they're doing. Now, they do have a lot of the sense to make because Mikael Bridges and, and um, um, DeAndre Aiden are both going to be up for contracts within that four-year span. They got a lot to figure out. But I understand why you re-sign Chris Paul because Chris Paul is a guy with a heavy uh, point guard market and a lot of teams looking to sign point guards. If you didn't re-sign him, somebody was going to sign him. I don't know if they're giving him 4-120. Would you get rather give Chris Paul 4-120 and him be there and still be your point guard or let him walk and now you just got the Cameron Payne re-signing, which was a W, by the way. That was super cheap for Cameron Payne. I think you do this deal. You got to keep remembering. It's either... When you're thinking about these overpays, remember what the market is, first of all, and remember the alternative. It's either I re-sign this player a little bit above what they're probably worth, or I lose them completely. I would rather re-sign Chris Paul a little bit more than what he's worth than losing completely. And one thing we've learned over the last couple of years, whether it be Russell Westbrook, whether it be the John Wall, whether it be whatever, there's no such thing as an untradeable contract. So if two years Chris Paul is bonds, getting off that money, it might cost you a little bit, but you can still do that at the end of the day. There's no such thing as an untradeable contract in the year 2021. Kyle Lowry signed a trade with Miami is elite. They also bring back Duncan Robinson. They bring in P.J. Tucker. I don't know where they got all this money to, to make all of this happen, but I put on Twitter, defensively, this team is about to be insane. My boy Duncan, is they're going to be trying to switch on to Duncan every chance they get because there is no weaknesses in that defensive lineup other than Duncan Robinson when it comes to that. What does the rest of the front office or the rest of the free agency period look for the Miami Heat? I don't know, but I'm, I'm happy about what they've done so far. When you look at how disappointed of a season it was for them to get swept completely, completely swept, I think some of the things, some of the things that they struggled with, they came out and addressed. I would love for them to get more bucket getters, and maybe they're counting on Tyler Hero to be better than what he was his sophomore year, or you're counting on Kyle Lowry to do. I think they need one or two more bucket getters, and this team could be really solid. Defensively, I know that they're going to bring it every single night. That boy, P.J. Tucker, he's a, he's a fire hydrant that wears Jordans. He's going to defend his butt off, and nobody's moving him. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm enjoying what the Miami Heat are doing this offseason. It's still not complete. We will get final grades eventually. Um, what else we have? Jimmy Butler got an extension as well, so that's part of the Miami Heat thing. Now, I will say that Jimmy Butler's extension being four years and then um, Kyle Larby in three years, they're going to be relatively old in a few years, but I think they're looking at their window as like right now between the end of the Kyle Larry contract. You still got Bam, you still got Duncan, you still going to have Tyler Hero, maybe not for that much longer. I don't really know what they're doing with their trades, 
but I'm enjoying what what the um, what free agency has done to them. Tim Hardaway Jr. got an extension. That makes sense. Mike Conley got an extension. That makes sense. It's it's a lot of money for Mike Conley, I must admit. But I got to think about it the same way with Chris Paul. What's the alternative? Either I let Mike Conley walk and sign somebody for a mid-level exception or I bring Kyle Lowry back on a deal that might be not too favorable in a couple of years. Derrick Rose. Let's talk about the Knicks front office or the, the Knicks free agency. I already talked about the Evan Fournier thing. Derrick Rose comes back three years, 43. Um, they basically brought back everybody that they could except for I think Bullock went to... Um, Bullock went to Dallas, if I'm not, mis not mistaken, and then they bring in Evan Fournier. Um, I was a bit confused at first because I, when they started to trade down from their picks, I remember on the broadcast, they were talking about, oh, the Knicks are doing this because if they have the 25th pick instead of the 21st pick, that frees up two more million dollars in cap space and they want to be big time buyers. And what we found out today is they weren't big time buyers. They weren't. But these are contracts that individually, when you look at it, Derrick Rose, 43. When you look at um, Nerlens Noel, 32. These are contracts you can package together in a few years or even this season alone. Oh, no, Reggie Bullock stayed. Who did they lose? They lost somebody at free agency. Reggie Bullock stayed. Alec Burke stayed. These are not bad contracts what they are. Basically, everybody's getting paid the same amount of money on that team, about $10 million a year. They can package these in in a little bit with some of their picks. And I think they're trying to think big-time picture. Oh, snap. Um, um. The Trailblazers brought in, I think they brought in the Plumley or something, and then they got Norman Powell back. Hey, if we package in, if we package in Bullock, Burks, okay, it's not a great package. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Norrell and all of the picks, maybe that's enough. Financially, it will make sense. I don't know. Zach Collins, oh, this is another thing about market. Zach Collins hadn't played basketball in like two seasons, and he got three years, 22. So this lets you know. David Nwaba got three years, 25 or 15. Shout out to David Nwaba. Just overall, a really, really solid solid day Vontae Graham I'm so happy I'm looking at this because I almost went past this Vontae Graham thing um Vontae Graham is going to the Pelicans on a sign and trade nowhere I guess it wasn't completely out of nowhere but I got to say I don't know what they are doing I don't know what David Griffin is doing now can I look back this on this and when the season starts and be like oh David Griffin was able to... it's possible but man Vontae Vontae on a four years 47 million he can shoot the ball, I guess. Last year, he didn't very, he didn't shoot it very good. He was a high volume, average percentage guy, which is not a great combination. But for them to be like, "Hey, we want Kyle Lowry," told the whole world, "We want Kyle Lowry." Don't even give us no other point guards. We want Kyle Lowry. And Kyle Lowry, like, nah, I'm gonna go to the team that's actually trying to compete. Okay. Um, Lonzo Ball. Hmm. We don't want Lonzo back, even though Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, our two star players, really want to play with Lonzo next season. Nah, we'd rather take the sign and trade of Tomas Sadoransky and Garrett Temple in a second. All right, so what are we going to do with the point guard position? Well, we got Tomas Sadoransky. What about Devontae Graham? And not even just that, we gave up a pick to bring in Vontae. Now, I'm not, this is not a shot at Vontae because I think Vontae is a solid NBA player. But I'm just saying overall, the Pelicans it don't seem like they really had a direction. They had plan A. Kyle Lowry, Kyle Lowry, Kyle Lowry. Oh, snap, that blew up. What do we do now, an alternative was to bring in Vontae. And I don't understand what they're doing with, with, with this front office. Vontae, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, B.I., Zion, Valanciunas. That's not a bad team. It's not a bad team, I don't think. Is this a team that's going to get you into the playoffs, which is what you want to do? Considering everything you paid this offseason... Whether it be with contracts, whether it be with picks, you gave up what three picks? Three picks this this free agency period alone. Three of them between the Jonas Valanciunas trade and the signing trade of Vontae Graham. And this is what we get for. They better they better do something crazy in day number two or when I'm sleeping because I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. We'll see though. We'll see. Um, JaVale McGee's now with the Suns, which is a good thing because they needed a backup so, so bad, and they finally got that. I'm trying to remember who the heck did the Dallas Mavericks sign? It was, it, they signed a shooter. I'm, I'm going to look it up real quick. It was Reggie Bullock, right? Reggie Bullock. Um, three years, 30 million. Three years, 30 million for uh, Reggie Bullock. Let me know what you think about free agency. That's, that's all we have to say. And I'm almost positive that I'm going to hit upload on this. Kim Bazemore went to the Lakers. That was I did that in my video. I literally did that in my video. Um, it just makes sense. Oh, 
look, people are already shout out to everybody on Twitter, bro. Y'all, y'all have made, <laughs> y'all have made my Twitter um, experience so much better. Cause everything that happens, I'm getting mentioned. Y'all tweeting about it, making memes. It's just, it's just great. Kenny predicted it. I guess I did. I guess. 